Hey, good morning, my friends. I'm Live Chief Meteorologist Mark Torregrossa here with the M Live Morning Weather Update brought to you by Consumers Energy. We're all going to be okay. We've got a major hurricane. We'll look a little bit at that, but this is Michigan, Michigan weather. So we'll be looking at uh, some frost possibilities. We'll also be looking at when's it going to rain. I mean, I know some people are not fans of rain, but it is very very dry so phone ringing off the hook excuse me for a second here try to put it on do not disturb um it's very very dry so we definitely need some rain we've got our first big frost and or freeze potential coming up next week and then the warmth roars right back i'll show it to you continue to be an incredible pattern so here we go and we'll start with a little bit on the hurricane uh, so a lot of folks have interest in florida i do me and my wife personally we own our someday soon some years away dream retirement home uh, by venice uh, rotunda west florida and so i'm watching it real close so here it is <coughs> There are some positives that some dry air is going to get entrained into it. It will weaken some, but for Tampa, Bradenton, Sarasota, uh, Nokomis, Venice, Clearwater Beach, this is going to be a bad thing. And then, of course, a storm surge is huge down the coast through uh, what's called Manasota Key. Uh, right now, 155 mile an hour sustained winds. The pr air pressure in the center of it is starting to rise, which means slow weakening. And again, here's just a little something on that because a lot of people are watching this. Let's see if I can. There's, there's the official track. And by the way, the official track is always the best track. So right now, the government, the Weather Service tells us not to focus on the center of the track, focus on the cone, and that is correct. But we have to focus on the, on the forecasted track to see what the trend is. You can't really trend a cone in your mind. All right, so just keeping back your head uh, Bradenton is the spot right now for the eye, Bradenton to Sarasota. And I know a lot of Michiganders go to that western Gulf side because it's so beautiful. So stay updated with that. And all you can do is say your prayers for everybody down there. Uh, say a weakening prayer is what I said. Okay, now we get into our weather. And what I want to emphasize, you know... Uh, what is my job for you here at M Live? We don't really get into the day to day, you know, partly sunny, high of 62 in Kalamazoo, mostly sunny, high of 70 in Flint, stuff like that here at M Live. Not yet. I want us to. Believe me, I want a whole team. Uh, but, um, you know, my big thing for you that you can't get elsewhere is. What does the big picture look like over the next uh, week or two weeks? A rich corpus, yes, it is true that the heavier rains will be north. Um, Raymond Abron in Fort Myers, right now, Raymond, you are going to be okay if you're away from the storm surge. All right, so. What's the big picture look like? We look at the upper atmosphere for that. Sorry, I don't sugarcoat it for you, folks. I don't baby you because I know you're smart enough. This is the flow 15,000 feet up. The black lines, that's essentially the wind flow. This is right now. We have a storm center over the southern part of Hudson Bay and a northwest wind. That has led to chilly temperatures. You also see the hurricane down in the south. Over the next couple of days, that upper low moves out of our area and a ridge tries to build back in. Not like the strong ridges that we've seen because the next wave is coming down from Canada and we get to next Monday and the coolest 
upper air pattern we've had so far this fall. Uh, coolest upper air we've had this fall, and that's why I say frost and or freeze possible. Maybe not so much in the far southern part of Michigan, but we'll look at that in a little bit. And then that shifts out, and already by the second half of next week, look what happens. We go back to that. If I had been uh, knocked out for a few days and I look at this, I'd say, oh, Michigan's having some nice September weather in the 70s. And we go 10 days out. Again, this is 10 days out, but what appears to be happening is troughs want to replace the ridge out west and blow up a ridge in the east. And we may go into a late October, very warm pattern. Very warm for late October. I would call it 60s and 70s during the afternoon. Now, that's one run of that model. I like to show you the ensemble, 31 tweaks of that same model. See if you get the same idea. And so we go into early next week, same idea on a cool pattern. That's kind of a showery pattern. Uh, developing on the weekend and lasting into Monday, Tuesday or so. Hey, good morning, Daryl Dynan. I know him. I love him. He was an engineer at NBC25 for me. I had a problem. He was on it. I call him Big D. So if you see Daryl Dynan today, give him a hug. Now, here's next week. Here comes the ridge. So, yes, the ensemble mo mo models even show that we will stay on the warm side. We go out 16 days. We are getting into a flat west-east flow, so we will get into fall weather at some point. But uh, summer is going to come back and hang on from time to time. Now, here is the European model. Uh, just for the long term, because we in Michigan are in search of some rain. So when? Here's your uh, forecast of the hurricane in the southeast. We go into Thursday. We go into Friday. Great mild weather, warm weather. Cold front slips south and stalls over us on Saturday. So we could have some rain showers develop in the southern third of lower Michigan on Saturday. And then the cooler air and that upper level low moves in. Ha, ah, Big D responding. You're the best too, buddy. Hope you're doing well. And then by Monday, we've got a cool lake effect, showery, very fall pattern, Monday, Tuesday. <clears throat> and then back to warmth. We end this out 10 days. See south winds. Developing in Texas, coming up through the plains, coming up through Iowa, coming up into Wisconsin, and headed toward Michigan. So we are probably not done with the 70s. I do want to emphasize, and I just don't know if I ever do a good job at this or if it ever really sinks in to you. When I talk about warmth coming back at this time of the year and it's 10 days out, Obviously, the sun is less powerful 10 days from now than it is right now. So warmth coming back doesn't mean 80s and 90s. It means we get above 70, and if you get the warmth peaking in the afternoon, could there be a 75 in the second two weeks of October? I would say definitely yes. So let's look at that same model's output um, so you get it. Let's see here. All right, there we are. Um, low 60s southern half, 50s northern half today. Tomorrow, 60s. Kalamazoo, you're at 64. You're beautiful. Friday, work skipper Friday. Why not? Temperatures in the 70s, breezy though. When we warm up at this time of the year, you're going to have to deal with a 10 to 20 mile an hour breeze at the same time. Saturday in the 60s, Sunday, low 60s, 50s north, and here comes our cool air. Monday could have some days in some places like Gaylord and Traverse City and uh, Grayling, Cadillac, maybe not hitting 50. The rest of us, low 50s, we're in jackets on Monday. 
We're in jackets on Tuesday. I'm hearing from the deer hunters. Uh, bow season, they want some cooler air. Next week, you get it. That's Wednesday. Thursday back to, or yeah, next Thursday back to the mid-60s. And Friday, based on the upper air, I'd say we would be uh, flirting with 70 degrees once again. So our trick now is when do we get some rain? And by the way, the showers on Saturday, southern third of the state, probably a tenth to a few tenths of an inch. Not really much help. And the showers uh, Monday into Tuesday when the cooler air settles in, probably a couple of tenths. We don't see anything that looks like a nice soaking. Everybody gets half inch to inch of rain. So it's bone dry. Uh, if you're doing some late season camping, you probably cannot have a campfire. It is just a tinderbox in a lot of places. Be careful with sparks off of your car, parking on the grass, and letting your car idle because that can heat up, start a fire. We've seen it with combines from farmers harvesting. If they get a spark or some sort of malfunction, their crops are so dry right now as they harvest that it can cause some fires. So be careful. Uh, I'll try to keep you updated on the hurricane. I'm not really focusing on that here because this is for Michigan. Um, take care. Say your prayers. Hurricane Milton, what we're all going to pray for, if you do such, we're going to pray for a rapidly weakening hurricane is the best thing we can do. All right. Thanks for joining me on the MLive Morning Weather Update brought to you by Consumers Energy. I'm MLive Chief Meteorologist Mark Torregrossa. Have yourselves a great Wednesday. I'll see you again tomorrow.